Good afternoon, everyone. My name is John Matthew from Impact Innovation Group, and we're working with the Queensland Government to deliver a series of webinars on behalf of the Office of Small Business. Today's webinar topic is DIY marketing for small business with our guest presenter, Brooke Maisley from Kenway and Clark. Just while we're waiting for other people to connect into the webinar, I'll go through some of the tools we'll be using for those people who haven't viewed a webinar through via the Citrix GoToWebinar system before. Your screen should look like this, a slide in the center and a control panel or dashboard on the right. This control panel will collapse automatically when you're not using it. So to keep it open, just click the view menu up the top and uncheck the auto hide control panel. During the webinar, we may ask you questions so we can better understand your experience with the topic. We'll ask you to raise your hand and to do that, just click the little blue hand icon on the side of the control panel. Remember to lower your hand afterwards just by clicking on the icon again. There are also an opportunity for, for you to ask questions during the webinar. So that the webinar can flow smoothly and we stick to our time allocated, we'd prefer to answer all questions at the end of the presentation. But you can please send us through your questions throughout the event if, as they occur to you. So just as a test while we're having everyone tune in, can everyone just raise their hand by hitting the little blue icon for me? Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much, everyone. That's great. We also have some handouts for you, which you can access and download by clicking on this section. Brooke has kindly given, uh, agreed to share her slide deck with us, and this is where you can access it. Now, please don't forget to download these documents as they have been specifically prepared to help you better understand the content within this webinar. They will not be available for download after the completion of the webinar, so I'll remind you again just before the presentation ends. I recommend you do this now because the handouts will also not be available when this um, webinar is uploaded onto YouTube. So it's now it's time to, for me to introduce our presenter. Brooke Maisley attended the uh, University of New England uh, doing a Bachelor of Media and Communications. After which she has worked for the Foundation for Regional uh, Development as an event and marketing manager and later as a marketing strategist with the, uh, with the firm Vivid, Vivid Thinking. Within Vivid Thinking, Brooke implemented the DIY marketing for small business workshops, getting small, business, small businesses pardon me, who cannot afford to outsource their marketing requirements to learn in four, uh, in four hour, hour hands-on workshops. Um, teaching them how to do some of the marketing themselves. The success of these workshops led to Vivid Thinking become a finalist in the New South Wales State Business Chamber Awards in the innovation category. Brooke has been with Kenway and Clark as their marketing manager for the last six months. And in this time, she has implemented multiple marketing strategies and brand development to take the business into the future. So Brooke, welcome to the webinar. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, my name is Brooke Maisie. Um, I've only been uh, living in, I'm currently in Moree, I've only been here for about six months. Um, when I started with Kenway and Clark, we have a, Kenway and Clark are a farm machinery dealership. They, um, they have a branch in Gundawindi. Um, so really the reason why I call it DIY marketing for business is because where I've seen small businesses fail is in the thinking stages. Um, not to say that you haven't thought a lot about your business, but chances are that if you've had to borrow money from the bank for business, you did a business plan, which included your SWOT analysis, so your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. You did a budget, a marketing strategy. You planned um, how to differentiate yourself from the competition. You saved it to an obscure place on your hard drive and you never opened it again, um, if you're anything like me. Um, now, a brand strategy, which is what I'll be going over today, it needs to be lived. So the last thing you want to do with a business plan is to share it with your staff and the world. But that is exactly the first thing you want to do with a brand strategy. Because the more people who know your brand and your strategy, the better off it is for your business. Now, I often do get pushes from hey, tradies in particular um, about this sort of airy-fairy thing that doesn't seem to have a direct impact on your business. 
But what you really need to know is marketing is not just advertising and it's definitely not just social media. Um, marketing is how you look, how you talk. Um, it's, it's also the small stuff like the speed in which you send out an invoice or what sports that you get involved with, with the, in the weekend. You know, it's every single little thing people will remember or interact with you. And quite often people are going, you know, I must, with my marketing, I must have a website, I must have Facebook, I must, must, must do all this sort of stuff to succeed. Um, but really it isn't, you really don't. It's just about getting the thinking right and uh, figuring out where you actually need to put your energy. So um, we'll go through and we'll talk about what is brand. So is brand your logo? or the business owner? Is it you? Is it what you sell, produce or provide? No, it's none of those things. Brands are how, brand is what you make people feel. Um, so it's a collection of your thoughts and feelings about it, the intangible things. Um, and brands live in your head. So how you think and feel about a brand is the brand. It's not just this physical place where you do business or, or the type of, you know, it's not your logo. Um, so what you make people feel is just as important as what you make and um, we can use some examples. So if I said Harley Davidson, what do you feel? Now have a think about this, um, I know you can't sort of write and tell me what it is but free. Am I right? What about with Qantas? When you fly with Qantas, how do you feel? Safe? Or when you go to Disney World, how do you feel? Do you feel like it's magical? So when you don't perceive an intangible, that's when it becomes a commodity to you. Now a commodity is a product or a service, cause or an organisation with no perceived intangible attributes. It's, it's basically, it's either what you do or what you sell. Um, brands compete on their intangible attributes. Commodities compete on price or convenience. Now, if I was to use Kenway and Clark as an example, um, we sell farm machinery. So we sell Case IH farm machinery. Um, so Case IH is the brand, just like John Deere is a brand. The product is the same. And how do we honestly compete in terms of price or convenience? Is there a real difference? Or do people choose us? Do they choose Case IH because they trust it? They know us? Um, they know the service that Ken Wayne and Clark provide. So if we have a look at this, you start with a product and you have the brand and you choose a brand for a reason and that reason is the feeling that you have with that brand. Um, so if we want to look at an actual example, if I said lemonade, you might say, what, Schweppes or Sprite? Let's go with Schweppes. So lemonade is the commodity, Schweppes is the brand, but the reason I choose Schweppes over something else is the feeling. And that feeling is because it's fresh. Um, I love the, the bubbles and the tastes and the sweetness. It's got nothing really to do with, or it has, doesn't have a lot to do with anyway with the taste. It's got more to do with how it feels when I buy it. And I know when I go into the supermarket and I want a lemonade, I'm going to choose Schweppes because of how it makes me feel. Not Definitely not because of price, or generally not. Um, so in terms of real value, how brands get into our heads, and why is it actually important for a small business? And I know that there's a few um, sole traders and, and small businesses out there. Um, there's two different ways brands get in our head. Number one is probably the one that you understand, exposure. That's your advertising, your repetition of message. You know, that's the radio or, you know, that, that's, the, um, that's the newspaper advertising or, or the mailbox dropouts. Um, so people are being exposed to your brand. And uh, so that's the first way to get into somebody's head. But obviously the more important and the... Um, the more sustainable way is through experiences. So in marketing um, terms, we call it touch points. So touch points are a moment, a time and a place where a brand comes into contact with the audience. So we are creating touch points 
for every event we sponsor, every social media update we post, every time you drive through town in your work branded car and you accidentally cut someone off or every time a staff member talks to friends or family about work. These are actual experiences with the brand and you will come to know, particularly if you're a growing business, that it's really important that your staff and your customers say the right things about your brand. Um, because anytime you have an unhappy staff member go home, they will talk to their family about something that happened at work. That family will then pass that message on to other people and it just becomes bad experiences. So it's really important that marketing starts at home in, in the business. Now, I did bring up the fact of a business plan that we do you know, when, when you're writing for the bank or for your accountant or you know when you're just starting out a business and in these marketing in these business plans you have these things called vision and mission statements um, I don't like to use the term statement I think it kind of limits you but if you look at your vision so um, your vision is the future of your business now the reason why we do this in marketing is because it's meant to inspire and give direction to you and your employees for the business and and really that's going to influence the decisions that you make in terms of where you spend your time and your money um, and you know the uniforms that you buy and and everything that you want to do it sort of directs it into a particular way so vision statements are future based um, and they're not really meant for anybody outside the company. A lot of companies, particularly the big ones, do post what their visions are. But um, yeah, it, it's meant to direct you and your employees, because studies show, and, I'll, and um, I wonder if I, if I can find the link for this, that employees who do know the vision of a business will actually work to help your management or management achieve it. And that's actually quite important. Um, again, it's. It all comes down to the experience with the brand and your employees really are the cornerstone of your business. They will always be the most influential touch point. So with your vision, ask yourself, what problem does your company exist to solve? What does your company hope to achieve? Who is your target customer base? What do you want to do for them? And based on these responses, ask yourself, what does success look like if you accomplish those things. So your vision, what is your vision for the future of your business? What are your goals? Make them, um, you can make them as out there or as real as you possibly want. Um, some business goals, particularly for um, sole traders or consultants sort of moving into a retirement phase quite often the business goal is in three to five years I want to earn the same amount of money but I want to work half the amount of time or I, or I don't want to be in the business five days a week I only want to be in the business three days a week that's a very valid goal it doesn't have to be a financial goal it can just be what it is that you want for your business and what you want to achieve um, and then what does success look like so write these things down figure out what it is um, I can give you some examples of a couple of um, big business visions. Uh, so Microsoft, a personal computer in every home running Microsoft software. I think that's, um, that's a very real vision for Microsoft and possibly can very much come true. It's um, almost there now. Um, but that, that's what it is. That's what success looks like for them, a personal computer in every home running Microsoft software. Uh, now you have Coca-Cola, so this is a little bit longer, but um, this is theirs. So profit, maximizing return to share owners while being mindful of our overall responsibilities. People, being a great place to work where people are inspired to be the best they can. Portfolio, bringing to the world a portfolio of beverage brands that anticipate and satisfy people, desires and needs. Partners, nurturing a winning network of partners and building mutual loyalty planet being a responsible global citizen that makes a difference. Now it is very long winded um, but it's based on these sort of five P's profit, people, portfolio, partners, planet. Now I think it's a wrong it's wrong for them to want to put profit first. It doesn't look good for their brand but they're the five things that they want to achieve in the future. They're their goals and what success looks like. 
and Avon, the beauty company, to be the best, to be the company that best understands and satisfies the product, service, and self fulfillment needs of women globally. So that's why I don't like putting statement on anything because your vision can be as long or as short as you want it to be, and it and it can be constantly changing. Don't ever just put a brand strategy in the back cupboard and let it forget and forget about it. Always try and bring it out and work with it. Talk to your customers, talk to your staff, try and figure out where you want to go and how you can achieve it, how you can be better than last year. So now that we've just answered the question, what, what, um, what does my business look like in the future? Now you can answer the question, why does your business exist? Um, a lot of clients used to ask, why would I bother putting vision before a mission? Because um, mission is present based. And honestly, the answer is because it is a lot easier to figure out what you want in the future than to figure out who you are right now. I don't know if that's the same for everybody. It's been the same for a lot of the small businesses that I did brand strategies with. Um, finding out why you exist, it is tricky. So your mission should provide framework and context to help guide your company strategies and actions by spelling out your overall goal. Um, you know, it's articulating the mission to customers, suppliers in the community. So don't ever hide your mission, not like your vision. Share it with the world. Make it become your mantra. You know, make it become I hate slogans, but your, you know, your um your slogan out in the world, I guess. It should include um it should include the opportunities or needs that your company addresses, the level of services being provided, and the principles and beliefs of your organization. And let it resonate with both your employees and the people outside of the business. Um, and it should express in a way that inspires support and ongoing commitment. And set the tone of the company and outline concrete, outline concrete goals. So that sounds like a whole lot of information. But just have a look at why do you exist? What needs or opportunities do you address? And how are those being addressed? So if we have a look or we have a, um, a chat about some other big businesses that um, have their, what their missions are. Now, before I go on to that, actually, if your mission is, to, um, if your answer is to provide the best customer service, scrap it now. Because we are living in an area in an era where we are lazy, and yet we are so used to getting and knowing exactly what it is that we need and we want. And customer service is no longer something that differentiates you from your competitors, because it is the norm. So whereas you might have um, some some big companies that were amazingly cheap and their brands were very different, that they didn't need to provide good customer service, they no longer exist or they shouldn't exist. So your answer to why you exist should never include to give the best customer service because that's just the norm now. That's got nothing to do with differentiating your business. So um, let's have a look. The Starbucks, their mission is to inspire and nurture the human spirit. One person, one cup, one neighborhood at a time. That's so brilliant. They're taking over the world, Starbucks. And is that essentially not true? It is true. That's that is they are starting and and everything that they do and where they work towards is about inspiring and nurturing people and taking over each neighborhood at <laughs> one neighborhood at a time. Or um, eBay provide a global trading platform where practically anyone can trade practically anything. Simple, beautiful, and very true. So just have a think about why it is you exist, what it is that you want to stand for, and, and what, it, what it is that you provide for your customers or, or for your staff. So now that we've sort of got those two, your vision and your mission sort of sorted, you work on to you, uh, what your business stands for, and that's called brand values. So your brand values could be thought of a way to measure yourself, what you do, and how well you do it. And it's sort of a way to define and explain what it is that your company or your business believes in. Um, 
So they capture the essence of your business. And quite often, uh, what we actually use brand values for is to measure ourselves in 12 months into the future. So with Kenway and Clark, we've identified that one of our brand values is quality, or quality in, in service. So in 12 months' time, I can sit down with everybody and I can go, all right, how well did we do in terms of quality over the last 12 months and what can we do to improve upon that? We believe in this with all of our heart, so what can we do to improve on that? Perhaps it's community support as a brand value. So in 12 months' time, we look and go, how well did we do supporting the community? What can we do better? Um, and you can measure yourself on this. It's, it's actually, if you keep track of where you're coming from, and, and this is how you innovate, and this is how businesses move into the future, by looking back and going, what can we do better? And you never have to stop it. And even if it's just you as a sole trader, you can look at yourself and go, all right, I, I'm a, let's say I'm a plumber, and my value is to be dependable. So how well did I do in the last 12 months at being dependable, at always showing up on time. What can I do to improve upon that? Now, I've got the Google brand values in the slides because they are absolutely spot on. Now, while you read this, keep in mind Google started writing these 15 years ago. So they have focus on the user and all else will follow. It's best to do one thing really, really well. Fast is better than slow. Democracy on the web works. I don't know how much I agree with that one. Um, you don't need to be at your desk and in answer. You can make money without doing evil. There is always more information out there. The need for information crosses all borders. You can be serious without a suit. Great isn't good enough. Well, um, they knew 15 years ago that people would be more mobile that information would need to be more universal and that they didn't want to be the serious company with um, everybody working in their own little office. They wanted to be this creative, innovative, bright company. Um, so serious without a suit, really. They have it absolutely sorted. So what you need to do um, is actually think about what it is your business stands for. You already know what your business stands for. Um, you already know the reason that you started the business. You already know why you are doing stuff in your business, why you're doing what you're doing. Um, just have a think about it and write it down because if you can look back and go, how can I do this better? You will always be moving forward in your business. So do you remember when I said at the beginning um, that intangible feeling about a brand is why somebody will choose us over our competitors. That's called your brand insight. And your brand insight is your emotional response. So, you know, when I drive a Harley, I feel free. When I fly Qantas, I feel safe. Your brand insight can be so undefinable that you might not be able to verbalize it until somebody says it. So um, let's have a look at some examples and see if you knew what the brand insight was if you could verbalize it or if you didn't know it until I said it. So if I say dove, just, just think about how dove are trying to present themselves and what they want people to get out of them. Is it real beauty? Real. Um, when I did a, this workshop a few weeks ago, it was people said, yeah, real. We know it's real. And that's exactly what dove are trying to do. So that, that's working really well. Who remembers the... Maytag repairman, um, probably a franchise a little bit old at the moment, um, but you know you've got your dependable Maytag man always there. If if one doesn't show up, somebody else will. Always dependable. Um, Volvo. When I drive Volvo, I feel safe. Virgin Airlines. Everything that Virgin try to do. Um, you know, just think about Richard Branson and, and all of their adverts or if you follow them on social media, everything that they try to do has got to do with being fun. You know, they're having dances and laughing in the, up in the sky in the um, aeroplane. These are the emotional responses these brands want you to feel because they want you to choose them over somebody else. So I've got an example of Ken Wayne Clark here. When I deal with Kenway and Clark, I feel supported. 
Now this is actually a reason why I wanted to uh, do this presentation is because we want to be there for our customers and for our community in the terms of Bentley. We want to support them and that might be, you know, we support them with the parts that they need for their machinery, we support them with fixing up their ag or truck, um, using a mechanic and fixing up their machine, we support them with their sales, their after sales, or we support them with um, other expertise and information that we know. So this is something that we'll be working towards and continue working towards and hope that um, all of our customers, they feel this brand insight when they deal with us. So we come to the personality. If your business were a person, who would it be? Um, technically, you know, your personality does determine how we interact. Um, so your business does need a personality because you interact with everybody, whether you're just talking to a customer, whether you're on the phone, whether you have a staff member that's um, going around, you know, knocking on doors or whatever it is that you do, um, everything is conveyed through a personality and personality for a business should be consistent. Um, I was beating my hand on the door table as I said that, should be consistent. Um, it determines how we interact and how we present ourselves. So there's a few questions you can ask yourself to figure out your personality, but let's have a look at the Coca-Cola examples. So their personality, fun, youthful, refreshing, happy, sharing. Anything you see with Coca-Cola, um, whether it's a, an advert, um, a billboard, a video, their uh, press releases, uh, anything on social media, any interactions they have with customers, they are this personality because that is how that they know people will remember them. And it's true. I remember Coca-Cola because they always have beautiful, fun, um, youthful looking people jumping out of, um, jumping on a trampoline in the middle of the ocean, you know, always sharing. Um, yeah, like we, we remember them because of that. So some things to think about with your personality for your business. Are you formal, funny, big or small, conservative, surprising, premium, inexpensive, stylish, classic, masculine, feminine, rigid, flexible, young, mature, loud, soft. You think about these things and don't chop and change. Um, we worked, I worked with a solicitor um, who was just work, a consultant like a solicitor working on his own and at the beginning of a brand strategy he said, look, I want to be everybody's pal, um, you know, I want to wear jeans to work, I want to be the one, the, the solicitor you can trust, the one that you can talk to and I'll go to your house and I'll go to your farm and I'll I'll work with you and I'll, I'll just be your bud. But then towards the brand strategy, we sort of figured out that the type of clients he was looking for would not go for that at all. He needed to be the, the solicitor that wore a suit that um, had all the answers professionally given, um, had everything was just spoken the way that it, you know, no, no, no extra stuff spoken, um, it was just give you the answer and that's all you needed because he was targeting corporates, not farmers. So that's how you know that your personality influences who your business or what your business is. So ask yourself some of these questions. If my business were an animal, what would it be and why? If your business were a dog, then you would be loyal, you would be honest, um, you would be hardworking, um, but the other side of it is you might not be innovative or, yeah, you'd, you'd, be, you'd be fun. Um, if your business drove a car, what would it be? So if your business drove a Ford Falcon, what does that say about your business? Describe your business in terms of human characteristics. Um, and a really amazing example uh, I have for this working is that I had a client that was a wholesale, that um, yeah, they were a wholesale fruit market and we did a brand strategy and the clients thought that the beautiful images that you get from photographing the fruit would make for amazing graphic design, um, particularly for social media um, to you know, give out their daily specials for the fruit. 
So we designed some beautiful posts for their weekly specials and I mean they were stunning. Um, they spent a lot of money on us to do this but when we um, actually tested it, we noticed that they weren't attracting a lot of attention. So after some thoughts, we actually looked back on the personality of the business and we remembered that organic was that one thing that they always wanted to be. They wanted to be real, organic, grassroots. So instead of keeping this business um, and doing all of the social media stuff for ourselves, we just turned the reins over to the owner's 12-year-old daughters, uh, or 12-year-old daughter, and she designed the posts in Microsoft Paint with images that she took herself from her phone, her first phone, and the images looked homemade and the posts looked homemade and they became so successful for that business because that is exactly the type of image that they wanted to portray to their business. And from that, we actually, um, the logo and the brand that we developed, the branding we developed for them were cartoons because they are this beautiful grassroots organic company that, that really are just there for the every fam, everyday family and their 12-year-old daughter stuff was perfect for them. So this is, this is where it becomes really important to be consistent and to figure out who your business is. Um, now I have sort of come to the end of um, this sort of brand strategy. There is quite a lot more to it and you can hire brand strategists to do these, um, to write these strategies for you, to, to come back to you with all of these ideas. There's a bit more to it, um, like your value proposition and and a few other things, um, your brand interactions, but really I hope that just gets you thinking, particularly for small business, getting that thinking right first, figuring out who you are and what it is that you want to achieve, that will help you and the biggest question I get as a marketer is generally about social media marketing, which is what this sort of next step is. So for the DIY marketer, you choose social media because it's free, because it's there, um, and because that's where your customers are. But um, unless you know the type of brand that you are, you are not going to be successful. So um, I'm sort of just going to move along here. Don't forget if you have any questions about, um, about brand strategy or about your personality or your brand insights, um, write them in and we'll see if we can get to them at the end. Um, so hopefully moving on to social um, media marketing, that is where a few of you um, might, particularly when you hear about social media, uh, um, DIY marketing, hopefully that's where your mind goes to or, or quite often i found out that's where the mind goes to. So where do you need to be on social media? I get this question all the time. Um, you got Facebook, you got Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, who can name a few more? Google+, Pinterest, Snapchat, there's a thousand, um, there's even ones I don't know. Again, you don't need to be on any of these, let alone all of them. I literally have a job because of social media, that's how I started out um, with Vivid Thinking is as the social media manager. Um, and yet here I am telling you that you might not even need to be on social media. Why is that? Because first and foremost, I am a marketer and when I'm talking to customers, I want to know what they want to achieve from their marketing. Sales, brand recognition, conversations, conversions, you know, you need to actually figure out if it's worth putting the time and money into something. If you did a radio ad, um, for six weeks or six months and you look back and you figure out that you didn't actually get any return on investments doing that, you're going to pull your ad. I'm assuming that's common sense for businesses. The same is, you sh the same you should apply to social media. If you are not going to get anything back from putting time and money into social media, don't do it. What you really need to do is focus on where to put your energy. So, you know, if you're not going, if you are only on social media because you think you should be, it's not going to be successful and you will drown in the excess. 
So then how do you figure out where to put your energy into social media? Are you a business to business organization? You've got a few options, LinkedIn, Google+, Twitter and blogs. Blogs are great, um, particularly if you were trying to get good search engine optimization, SEO from Google. Writing blogs and having lots of images will be successful for your business. And um, the type of person I am, I follow a lot of other businesses, particularly marketing businesses. So they are marketing to me as a business. I love reading their blogs. I love learning, finding out more. Um, so LinkedIn is not quite as um, prevalent out in regional Australia as it is in the city. But it is, it is getting there and it's very good to share ideas and, and you can post jobs and a whole lot of other things. It's um, great to find like-minded people as well. Now the thing you have to remember about Facebook, which is obviously the biggest one, is that face, behind every person posting on Facebook, even for a company, is an actual person. It's not a company. Uh, whereas with LinkedIn and Google Plus and Twitter, they are companies, or oh, they can be companies. Facebook can never just work with a company. It has to have a person, a, a personal account attached to it, which is why for business to business, during business hours, you look at some of these social media stuff. Now, are you a business to consumer? You've obviously got your Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and Snapchat. I don't know if you've thought about Snapchat. It's a very young medium, uh, but they are working and it is starting to work very well with um, global businesses. So if you want to sell something overseas or you're an information provider or you you're a do, do comedy or something, Snapchat can work really well. Um, but Pinterest and Instagram in particular, if you are like a cafe or you're a clothes store, um, if you are an event manager, you design things, you, you are imagery based, Pinterest and Instagram will be a lot more successful organically for you than Facebook will. Is your business based on providing information? Maybe you're an accountant. Um, YouTube, Facebook and your blogs. So with YouTube you can do like video editorials or um, interviews. Get the information out there, share it with your customers, um, you know, become a face, become a story. Uh, and YouTube's really good for that. Or is your business based in imagery? Again, you've got Instagram, Snapchat, and YouTube is good for that as well. Um, YouTube is very difficult. YouTube is run by Google, so unlike Facebook, you can't sort of have boosted posts or Facebook ads sort of thing. Your YouTube ads are a Google Ads word, so it's very difficult unless it, you have good content to have good YouTube. Uh, it is difficult, it does require energy and time, but again, when you decide who you're talking to and how you should put your energy, it, it could be a um, successful thing for you. Um, a massive question I get about advertising on Facebook is, like, how do you spend the money and stand out with it? Um, and my response is always the same. You have to do the thinking first. I never, never boost a Facebook post. Um, not anymore. It's incredibly, it, it's unsuccessful for me, for our business. Um, I'm not reaching the people that I want to reach. It's not a message that I want to put out there and I'm just spending money. Facebook is very good for <laughs> trying to get as much money out of you as possible. I literally, I noticed for the first time two days ago that um, on one of the pages that I manage, Facebook said, congratulations, your page is doing so well. Here, have $10 ad credit. And that was the first time I've actually seen Facebook do that. Um, so I haven't even researched what it is or what that means. Um, but Facebook will always go, oh, this post is 85 more successful than your other ones. Boost it for $19 to reach up to 64,000 or 6,400 people. Um, I was only reading about a week ago that um, Facebook have been lying to people and actually saying, um, giving, like putting in there, you know, you will reach up, you know, this amount of people. They've actually been telling everyone that there's, they would reach more people than actually exist in the world. 
<laughs> so, um, they're very good at wanting to take your money. So spending it wisely really just means, and, and standing out from the crowd, as you can see from the image there, um, it, so much on Facebook is same, same. Um, and standing out can be very difficult. So again, it all comes back down to the thinking. Um, my father has a small cleaning business and he just said to me, I want to spend money on Facebook. I said, well, what do you want? Do you want people to learn your name? Do you want people to book you? Um, or do you want people to see information about the industry and have an open conversation with you? Do you want to engage with your current customers? Do you want new ones? He goes, no, no, I just want to spend money on Facebook. It does not work like that. You have to figure out what you need to achieve. Is it awareness? Is it consideration? Consideration can often just mean um, posting things about your industry, um, being relevant about your business, um, or is it conversion? Now, we probably all know what ones we want and which will be the trickiest to achieve. Um, so you just have to be, you have to think about it, you have to know what it is that you are trying to, what it is that you're trying to do and make sure it contributes to your overall brand image. Uh, particularly these days there's a lot of heated political discussions and a lot of brands are getting involved, which can work, but you have to figure out if that's actually the image that you want for your brand and are you willing to, um, are you willing to have bad relations with a huge amount of the population by having this particular political agenda or opinion? So just make sure it, you know it's what you want to contribute to your overall brand image. Um, now I'm sort of really just going to run through this um, because you figure it out yourself. And um, while it says Facebook advertising, it really, this same um, formula applies for all online digital advertising, including Google AdWords. Um, and Google AdWords are, um, Google AdWords include like YouTube ads, display ads, and the um, little ads you see, you know, at the top of a search bar, like at the top of a search when you search on Google. Your objective, fig you figure out your objective, who your audience is, where you want it to go, how much it's going to cost you, and what sort of format you want it to take. Do you want it to just be word-based? Do you want it to be imagery? You know, all that sort of thing. So now we've actually got to the DIY part of the DIY um, marketing for small business. So this is a toolbox of stuff that I hope um, some of you may have heard of a lot of these things I'm about to tell you, and some of you might not. Um, so I know you were probably wondering when I was going to get to all this do-it-yourself um, type of things. A lot of it's just been that out in the open thinking. Um, so I hope you have you get some tools to play with. Um, and now, because you know who you are, you know what your personality is, you know what you want to achieve. So use these tools to reach that. So Canva. Um, I still use Canva. I could pay a couple of hundred dollars a year for Photoshop, but Canva designs like a pro. Um, have a play with it. It's lots of fun and it's free. Uh, Kim Wayne Clark still use the free version of Canva. Um, the paid version is like $12 a month, I think, um, or sort of around there, $15. Um, so there's lots of stuff. It's got templates. Design it, it's, so you use it for like email headers, for social media posts. Um, you can use it to design a whole lot of printed things as well. Um, it's, it's just a lot of fun. And the amount of times I see big marketing agencies using Canva templates, I mean, you're paying $300 an hour to these agencies to do these designs for you and they're just using Canva. It's, yeah, it's quite funny. So just, um, have a play with it and see how you go. Now with images, has anybody used Google's reverse image search? Because it can be your best friend or your worst friend. Um, never ever use an image you take from Google unless it specifically says Creative Commons. Um, because as an agency, um, when we had photo shoots with 
some of our clients to use for the website or or social media or um, whatever we were doing e-marketing quite often I would go on to Google and do a reverse image search to see if anybody else had stolen and been using our images and you can be sued and it can get expensive so never use somebody else's images and never use pixelated badly cropped or wrong colored images because um, the human mind uh, absorbs images 65,000 times quicker than words so they are the quickest way someone will judge your brand so just make sure to use good quality images and now there's plenty of places you can get images on one of the handouts um, which is the DIY marketing checklist uh, that you guys can download I actually have a, a whole list of websites you can use to find free Creative Commons images the one I use most often is Pixabay. I found that it has the best quality of images. Um, however, it is a European site. So if you're looking for a dog and you put in dog, you might not find the right dog, but try fur baby or something. They, some of their keywords are mixed around, so always play with the words. But I always find it has um, the best quality. Now, every single image in this presentation other than the very obvious farm tractor Kenway and Clark related ones came from Pixabay so have a look through and you can see um, where I use the images and what I use them for and um, yeah use them otherwise you've got Pexels, Flickr, Unsplash there's a few others now scheduling um, there's a few scheduling um, social media scheduling things out there I use Hootsuite um, because it's free and you can have up to three connected social media sites. So you can see there, Kenway and Clark have um, Facebook, Google Plus, and Instagram on theirs. Um, and essentially, on a Monday morning, I schedule all the posts for Kenway and Clark for the rest of the week. And then, just if I come across something during the week or I see something while I'm out and about, I will then do something on the spot. But that way, I can set and forget. Scheduling will be your best friend. I think in Hootsuite you can schedule up to 12 months. So you can schedule all your Christmas posts. Like, how perfect is that? Um, you do your Christmas ones now when you've got the time so you're not rushing over Christmas or any of your holiday ones and you know something is going to come out. Um, so, have a, and it, yeah, so have a look at that. Now, just to end, I want to give everybody quick things that you can do today to instantly be a better brand online. Hopefully a lot of people are already on top of this. Um, Google My Business, if you haven't already claimed your business, claim your business on Google. Um, there's a few different ways you can do it. It can get annoying. Sometimes they send you a postcode, uh, a postcard, sorry, to your business address to make sure that it gets you with a little code to claim it. Um, other times if somebody's already claimed it, then you have to send all this email stuff. Um, but try and do it because it's it's really um, people will see your Google Google My Business before they see your website. It doesn't matter how much you pay to have your website be the number one. They will always see Google My Business first. So make sure that it represents your brand. Um, and it's only been the last two months that they've decided to put this post thing up. So you can see how I have that apply today. It's a it's a post. Um, and you can see it when you search for our business or when you're on Google Maps or whatever. Um, they expire after one week, but there's a link that they can find out more or whatever. Um, they've only just in the last two weeks changed the size, so it's no longer a square. It's a bit more of a rectangle. Um, but yeah, it's constantly changing. But yeah, definitely do this. Set your times when you're open. Um, yeah, very important to do this. Get on some of your digital marketing stuff like electronic newsletters. People don't, people have um, a bad association with e-newsletters, but about approximately 20% of people will open up an e-newsletter. But if they click on a link and follow through, 70% of those are likely to buy. That's a huge, that, that is about the same amount if somebody walks into your shop if they click on your e-newsletter link, then they're 70% likely to buy. And that's, I think it's about 80, if someone walks into your shop, it's about 75% likely to buy. 
So um, don't don't miss out on that. And ask people to review online. Um, Google and Facebook and all these they will rate you based on your um, your reviews. They will rank you higher. Uh, so don't be afraid to just ask people. Just say if if they come in and and you've um, you've served them or you're you're talking to them, just say, hey, do you mind while you're here to give us a review? We um we're we're wanting to improve our our online services. It's as simple as that. So um that's the end. The next one is a blank little page. So um yeah, I'll hand it back over to John. Thank you so much for that, Brooke. That was so insightful. Um, I think we learned really a lot today about what we can do about marketing, the stuff we need to know about marketing, and it's just simply buying a bunch, a whole bunch of uh, boosted Facebook ads. Um, please feel free to um, put your questions in the question section. We do have a few questions to start off with. Um, this one here from Lisa: um, Is your brand an asset, and how do you quantify it? Um, your brand is definitely an asset, and when you, um, if you're looking at selling a business, you can quantify your brand. Um, you do it in terms of what you get from your name or what you get from everything you've already put out there. So, if you are, let's say you're like Ken Wayne Clark, and you're quite well known within the areas that you are servicing, uh, then you look at how many people in the area will know like the percentage of people who know your brand. Um, and, and there are quite a, there are a few free tools out there. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but there are a few free tools out there that definitely um, will, will help you calculate the value of your brand. And your accountants are fairly good at doing that as well. Um, but yeah, definitely, particularly if you were selling a business, there, there are definitely ways to quantify what your brand is worth um, by yeah, there's a few calculators out there. It's been a while since I've had to have a look, but yeah, have a have a look at it. Um, have a quick search online and see, and ask your accountant as well. They can um, they can let you know. Excellent. That helps. <laughs> <laughs> um, next one is from Alja. Um, what do we need to focus on in regards to marketing strategy as selling as as a direct selling business? So, if you say you're a direct selling a product, um, let's say you sell t-shirts in a store, the type of marketing strategies would be very local. Um, so you, you want to get involved. It, it depends on, on who your brand is too. So if you are if you are a fun, outgoing, young, youthful brand, um, then get involved with the young, youthful music events in, in your town or, or the soccer um, tournaments or netball or whatever. So yeah, fi figure out where your people are, and um, and and target them like that. It's and have a conversation with them. People don't. People forget that the most successful way to market your brand is to talk about it. Um, I always love going to events, and I love bringing up where I work, what I do, what we are selling. Um, I'll always take business cards with me. You know, if if you're a business owner, you all who you are is always selling who what your business is. So, yeah, I, I think face to face marketing is still the best, uh, in my opinion. But in terms of the different strategies you want to have a look at, it just depends. Where you're trying to reach, um, social me social media can work well, um, and digital can work well. Maybe if your customers are um, older people, maybe you should look at sponsoring like a music night at the local um, RSL or something. Yeah, it's it's there's a whole different range of things you can do. Be innovative too. Whatever you can try and do, try and be a little different. Excellent. Um... This one is from Damien. Um, is it better to market on your own, or is it better to get an external person to give a, a different perspective? Uh, working with an like working from an agency point of view, uh, we always our customers or our clients always got a lot out of giving out their marketing their strategies externally. Now we we always we also had a um, we had a rule that we wouldn't do. We wouldn't do executing 
or executive um, marketing strategies, like we wouldn't do social media, we wouldn't do adverts or um, videos or anything like that unless we'd done a brand strategy with the client first. So we were first and foremost a um, strategy a strategist company. Um, yeah, it's it's it just depends. People can't really often they can't afford a lot of the time to outsource it. But if you get the thinking right, then you can do some of the stuff yourself. I would always love. Uh, I always recommend that people get an outsider's perspective if they ever do uh, a brand strategy or if they are ever looking at um, what sort of marketing strategies they want to do, because. If you are working in your business, then you are not working on your business, and that is where a lot of small business owners get hung up: is working on their business, are uh, working in their business. So, um, an outsider can help work on it. But yeah, if you can try and do it yourself, um, and there's no nothing wrong with that at all. It's getting your thoughts out because if it's your business, it's you. So it, that, yeah, it's, it's hard to argue with that. <laughs> um, just following another one, uh, any good ideas to market a medical centre there, Brooke? Social. A medical centre, um, like a, a doctor's surgery or something. Um, yeah, you figure out if you if you are the type of brand that you want to be, might be um, based around better health uh, or promoting better health. And yeah, your strategies could be getting involved with anything that can promote better health. So that could be uh, your local park run, um, or yeah, there's there's a whole. What else could you could yeah you could you could do like um, YouTube or a video a series of videos that um, talk about how you can can be a, a better like how you can have better health, what sort of things you can look out for. Um, yeah, and then see who your target audience is, mate, as well. So if you are trying to reach younger people, then get involved with um, the sports. If you're trying to reach families, get involved with the schools. If you're trying to reach older people, then get involved with um, yeah, with nursing homes or yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah, we've had um, one of our previous uh, office small business uh, presenters talk about how he. Well, I started a dental surgery and started innovating in marketing by bringing a uh, uh, a dog into the the dental surgery and making the <laughs> and providing free slippers for his uh, for his clientele and it, that took off. So he goes and visits yeah. um, his own clientele by giving out slippers and they're famous for that in Moorumba. So absolutely. Well, in Western Australia, Uber started to bring out um, Uber Pet. Where they um, take pets to workplaces, like dogs and cats, to workplaces um, to cheer up the and, and to create an atmosphere of um, community in in the workplaces. So that sort of innovative stuff, um, absolutely, it's, it's something different. It's why people would choose you over a competitor. It's, that's lots of fun. <laughs> definitely, definitely differentiated. Um, we've got yeah. one more question here uh, from Alana. Um, how do you go about changing your brand? But still retaining your customers. Um, we we've done this quite a lot. So when you do, when you're rebranding and when you are doing brand strategies, um, you can include your customers in it. Uh, quite often, we when we do rebranding strategies, we um, we do surveys and A/B testing with what will work and what won't. We include our customers. We get them in. Um, we offer them. You know, some free giveaways if they um, want to get involved, and it's it's also too just about maintaining who you are as a business. Um, if your business is based on like what your brand values are, uh, and if your if your business has your brand values like you know you are reliable or you are local, then try not to lose them with rebranding. Um, people will associate that a lot more. With then what the actual name is. Um, I had a, a business that um, they were an event management company, and they wanted to rebrand. the The principal wanted to do a rebranding from um, it was just from Armadale Events, and we actually had a look at at her history to figure out what would resonate with her and with her customers. And 
um, her family were one of the first um, people over, or, or Thomas Rose was actually the first free settler in New South Wales that settled along the Hawkesbury River. So Thomas Rose, and when we had a look at her reasons for doing the business, which had it had a lot to do with her family and had a lot to do with her history. So we actually figured out that she should be Rose Events because it was connected to Thomas Rose who came over to Australia as, as the first free English settler and then the rest of the, some of the other Roses were um, business owners and that influenced her decisions quite a lot and that's how we figured out that sort of rebranding and we went from there. All right, um, it's coming up on one, so we'll probably have to end it there. Thank you so much for attending the webinar, everyone, today, and thank you so much, Brooke, for your insights. They are incredibly invaluable and gave us really, food, really good food for thought, I think, and a really good discussion. Um, so, everyone, please remember to download the handouts before you exit. The webinar is being recorded and will be uploaded to the Impact Innovation Group YouTube page, should you wish to view it again. Uh, you will receive an email with information about um, the small businesses uh, programs and uh, 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 government uh, opportunities that uh, are currently going being offered by the Office of Small Business. Um, thank you again for Brooke and uh, once again, hope please tune in uh, for upcoming webinars and uh, yeah, have a great day everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you.